Faulkner was one of America's best writers. Some have him up there at the very top of the list. And depending on who you ask, you'll get a very different answer for what his finest or best work is. Although I think one novel stands out as having the absolute finest prose. And definitely from the perspective of a writer, the sheer scale of what he was able to pull off is pretty incredible. So I'll get to that in a minute. But first, just want to go through which of his novels and stories are most accessible and also just some of the other novels that are in the mix for his best and most impactful. So of his short stories, A Rose for Emily is the most commonly read. It's one that's often taught in high school. And that would be a good one to start with if you're excited about reading Faulkner's stuff and you haven't read anything by him in a long time or at all. A Rose for Emily. Another short story I recommend is Barn Burning. This one's a tad longer than A Rose for Emily, and it's told from the perspective of a child whose father may or may not have committed a crime that may or may not have involved burning a barn. And you see from this child's perspective the impact on the family. It's a really good portrait of that family in a specific place and time in the South, and it's a really good showcase, really good display of what Faulkner is able to do with the short story format. He has this really good quote about all novelists being more or less failed. Actually, I have the quote right here. It's, I'm a failed poet. Maybe every novelist wants to write poetry first, finds he can't, and then tries the short story, which is the most demanding form after poetry. And failing that, only then does he take up novel writing, which is a really good way to frame all of his works. Often after finishing one of his novels, I've had to think back on them because I was writing an essay for college or something. And it's pretty exceptional how little that's in his novels feels extraneous. Often, even though he goes on these really long discursions or includes a wide variety of perspectives. So that's Faulkner's short stories. Before I get to the novel that I think is his finest, I definitely want to cover the others that are right up there neck and neck towards the top. The first of those is As I Lay Dying. So there's a ton of first person chapters and very few of them are from the same person's perspective. What's happened in this story is that the matriarchal figure has died. And so everyone else is left to deal with that. And it's a great portrait of this family in the South as they work to get her buried. That's As I Lay Dying. Another novel that's also considered to be one of his finer works is Light in August. And if you're not interested in having to wade through a bunch of different perspectives, and if you don't really have the patience to wade through more challenging prose to get to those often subtle payoffs, then this might be the one for you. It's on the longer side, but the narrative is told a lot more straightforwardly than it is in some of Faulkner's other works. And so for that reason, I think Late in August is one of his more accessible great novels. Another novel that absolutely has to be mentioned among Faulkner's greatest is Absalom, Absalom. A lot of people say that Absalom, Absalom is his finest novel, and it's kind of hard to argue with them. Although what I think sets his finest novel apart from Absalom, Absalom is the sheer heights he was able to get to with his prose. And so lastly, and this is the novel that I think is his finest, is The Sound and the Fury. Very few writers have ever written anything to the level of the first part of this novel. This particular copy of The Sound and the Fury is a bit misleading. It's actually only about that long and it's split into about four parts. Each one is from a different vantage point, but the first one, the opening section of this novel, this is the novel that I think best showcases Faulkner's abilities. If you really wanna understand the level that he was able to write at, look no further than this one. But again, if you want something that's more accessible and maybe something that'll be a little bit more immediately entertaining, try one of the other stories that I've mentioned. If you got something out of this breakdown, consider subscribing or leaving a like, but really I'm more interested in maybe a comment, especially if you've read a few of Faulkner's books, 
Just let me know which you had the strongest reaction to, which you like the best, and then also maybe which you think is his finest work.